I'll be remembered because of the investment that I put in people, the times I shared with them, the ideas I shared with them, the knowledge, the wisdom I gave them, and the thought I gave them, the template that they were preparing. I want my absence to be felt when I'm not here, and I believe that that's my biggest investment. That society can one day inherit from me an achievement that continues. You know, I grew up in the UK and 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 Ghana and some parts of Africa.、Um, But for me, everywhere has been like my world. Once I live in a particular area, my world evolves around the area, my surroundings, the people, and I just like to learn from them. I I studied from nature more so than I did from school. I well, I moved to Ghana in、um, 2001. I had just turned 21 and I had just made my first million pounds. But for some reason, I had to come to Africa. I don't know why. That the voice that has always been talking to me, <laughs> like go here, do this, do that. You know, I listen to that voice. It's funny enough, but I I don't know how to, or maybe I haven't had the chance to explain it to people or a stage for people to understand that there is a voice that talks to me and controls me that I listen to. I think we all do. We all do hear this voice, but there's so much doubt. Basically, that okay, would I do it? What would happen? Would I lose? Would I be? And you know,、uh, it takes more than guts. To cross that river or cross that road, that leads you to another height, that could be a mountain. There's a number of things. I mean, I thought that at that time Africa was empty, Ghana was empty, there was nothing here. But everybody would see it as a disadvantage. I have to look for an advantageous point from that, and I thought coming to Ghana would give me an opportunity to have a fresh start and to be able to build whatever I wanted to build from scratch. You know, and it, it kind of made sense to me. I wanted the experience. I wanted to overcome the challenge. You know, and besides, I thought it was gonna take me away from some people that I've spent so much time with them already. I didn't need to do any more.、Oh, okay. You know, so it was a number of things. But then, when you take such decisions, it's a decision with a solution at the same time because you know you're gonna be alone. So you have to think of the solution out. What is going to keep you going if you're going to be alone, you know? Because when you take narrow decisions, you end up on a narrow path,、mm. and on that path, you're alone.、Yeah. A lot of people might think you're crazy when you're sane. A lot of people would think you're sane when you're crazy, you know. So it's very dynamic when you take such decisions in life critically. But I I would advise people to take that kind of decision that comes from their intuition and the voice. And then act upon their instincts, and let their belief and their confidence lead them to their fate. I was just obsessed with becoming a millionaire because、um, I had the friend that was training me in the business I got into, telecommunication, ACN, and he showed me my first million dollar on the notes, which was like a money order, and、uh, you know I said I'm gonna be like this, you know. But before that, I was selling scrap steel. Oh wow! And it was doing good. And I accidentally got into the scrap steel business. I've always been, you know, when I was young, I managed to buy two animals and turn it to two hundred and something. That was a hen and a cock. Wow, that's so, amazing. So I was just like eight years old, and that was my passion, my fantasy of okay. For me, that time, that is a fantasy world to be able to have chickens all over the place, and、oh. it, it works. I I owe over two hundred properties. Yeah, here in Ghana, but I do own properties outside as well. Okay.、Um, but for me, it's not about owning the properties. You know, it's the joy and the passion of being able to bring out what we envision in our head as design, looks, feel, lifestyle, aesthetics. You know, putting all that package together and giving it up. It's more than building a car or building a watch. Yeah. You know, there's so much that goes into that. You know, it's like ten thousand things going into one component. But people will just go in and sleep and pay you two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars after, but they don't seem to realize that you didn't just spend fifty-three million, but you also spent five years of your life planning this. So if I was a painter, that means it took me five years to paint that work. And if I was painting a girl, that means it took me five years to win that girl. Now the question is, would you want to lose that paint or that girl after five years of your life、yeah. and all that money? So that's the value that people do get when they put. The spirit, the drive, the commitment, the passion, the investment are these things plus the money. I don't know, but 
one thing I know for sure is whatever I would have become, I would be the best at it. Okay. Yeah, that's one thing that I know. It's just how my spirit works. I believe in being an extremist in a very nice, in a nicer way. Not like, you know, being an extremist and drinking alcohol, but being an extremist in, in creativity. Like, you know, going beyond imagination. Okay, so Freedom Drip Caesar, it's basically my second alter ego that I've been building this story spiritually as the youngest prince that stood up to become the voice of his continent and then finally became an emperor based on what his generation believed that the words of wisdom and achievement that he had within his capacity was something that everybody had to follow. Okay. You know, so that is the movement. And so I started the Freedom Jack of Caesar movement by first of all moving to America to write my storybook, which is one way in, one way out. Okay. Okay. And then after that would be the movie, which is the empire of the art of ruling. So all these things I have to do with in America. But how did I go? How would I go to America like any other black person or African? It looks very cheap. They all went there looking for an opportunity. They were one day looking for a job. I went there as a prince. I went there with my own cars from Africa. I went there with my dog. I went there and I bought a place in Bel Air to live in the midst of the best of them. And uh, I told him that the prince have arrived. Wow. So that was the reason why the camel and you know okay. all these things came in. It was just a message that I was sending to them that this is not coming from America. This is coming from Africa. Well, first of all, I wanted something monumental. And then I wanted to also create a landmark okay. and a footprint at the same time. I felt like if we are young people and we're going to develop, we have to develop our country, the mindset of our generation, and let people adapt to that so it can be replicated. And I feel like Ghana is probably, or well, maybe Ghana has a fast-growing economy, but when it comes to development, they're like three, they're behind schedule, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, three levels behind schedule. So I wanted to fill, fill in those gaps, bridging that, that gap. But at the same time, I also wanted to send a message that my work is a state of art. Okay. It's a piece of art. Yeah. My fashion style is a piece of art. My movement is a, you need to be a part of it. You need to talk about it. This is what I believe in. I don't believe in doing things halfway, you know, and I thought this country needed that focus point where you can see a building that is lit up, that, you know, from east, west, south, and north. And that's why I chose this very location. I was trying to tell the people into real estate that real estate has three rules and it's location, location, location. Meaning that there is a location that everybody watches. There is a location that everybody would accept and need for it to become a landmark. And there is a location that becomes a footprint where everybody wants to walk past. It's like a monument. So that's what number one I was supposed to do. Well, I think if somebody saw a Lamborghini in a glass, they would think they're either in London, Dubai, or America. Why can't they think they're in Ghana? Mm -hmm. And I, I'm happy that they can get to say that. Because this Lamborghini should be driven on the streets. But I feel like they deserve it more to be a part of it. And this is my country. This is my nation. This, these are my people. I, I feel like, you know, I should find a nicer way to share my wealth with them. For them to be a part of my movement. Um, even though it adds up to the building. But more so, it adds up to the public. They have access to it. I do. I do, but I do it sensibly because they are maybe two or three different ways of giving. Although the art of giving is receiving, but if you give wrongly, it goes to waste. You always need to give to the needy. And sometimes you just don't put it in your hands. Sometimes you build for them. Sometimes you create things for them. You know, I have, I have invested in a whole university when I didn't have number one. Mm. Bought it and gave it away to a church so two or three thousand kids can have the chance to have free education and get a degree. But that was for me uh, an oracle 
peaking. You know, I I I thought this is the ebb to me, like the last feeling of giving away so much without feeling it. You know, it puts you on a different level. Then there are other things that I'm doing. You know, there's like ten communities I'm building, even in America, supporting the homeless. You know, there's a lot of things I do, and. I wouldn't want to talk about it, yeah. basically. I personally, I think giving is giving. Yeah. You know, it's not to be talked about, but talking about communities and nations and generations, it's in my interest to rebuild our nations again, to rebuild our culture, to revive it, to help rebuild our continent again as New Africa. This is my belief. My belief is you know, an overall aspiration and inspiration, you know, that would impact society, would bring a change, a change where I will not be remembered because I built some tall skyscrapers or some buildings. I'll be remembered because of the investment that I put in people, the times I shared with them, the ideas I shared with them, the knowledge, the wisdom I gave them, and the start I gave them, the template that they're replicating. I want my absence to be felt when I'm not here. And I believe that that's my biggest investment, that society can one day inherit from me an achievement that continues.